I'm super excited to have Stephanie Carpenter with us today. Stephanie is a graphic designer, educator, letterpress printer, and right now she currently holds the title of program officer at the Hamilton Wood Type and Printing Museum in Two Rivers, Wisconsin. It's a place I certainly have visited and was very thrilled to be there, being the type geek that I am. And she's going to talk to us about connections, conversations, and communities engaging the world's largest collection of type. So again, Stephanie, we thank you for being here, and um, I'm going to let you take over. And if you have any questions, guys, just put it in the chat, and we definitely have saved time for Q&A at the end. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, thanks, Terry. Uh, and I can, ha if it's like something that we need to answer when we see it right on screen, I'm always happy to, to elaborate. So uh, I want to say thank you so much, Terry, Sink, and Millcraft for letting me share what we do at Hamilton. Um, this is really exciting because it is a way to reconnect with people we know, because I see some familiar, familiar names in there, and also introduce others to what we do at the museum. So how did I start at Hamilton? Uh, when I first started, I was a volunteer. I did study graphic design in undergrad. Um, but, you know, I wasn't a printmaker. I wasn't getting really dirty. I was learning about type. Uh, and then I went to Indiana University specifically because they had a letterpress shop that was directly connected to uh, the graduate studio. So that meant I could sneak in there anytime I wanted. And my graduate uh, professor started to bring us to Hamilton Wood Type. And uh, with that, let's see, it was a really big, cool old factory in a quaint tiny town because the museum was actually still in the factory, the Hamilton, the original Hamilton factory um, building, which was pretty cool. The collections were still being unpacked. So when you think of what that means, like what does it mean when a museum's collections are being unpacked? At Hamilton, it meant literally buckets of wood type, pallets, shelves, full of cases of type and vintage printing blocks. I mean, it was heaven to a graduate uh, graphic design student. So I started to make the seven hour trek two or three times a year to help. Jim Moran, who was the director at the time, would often inform us that we were going to be cleaning and organizing type. And he seemed really sorry about it. And I mean, I can see why. This was a dirty, filthy, hands on job. Uh, the type we were cleaning had not seen the light of day for years. Um, but what it meant for me was it was a dedicated time to stare at one piece of type for a long time. So it allowed me to look, it allowed me to get back to the basics. Uh, I got to know every nook and cranny of each letter form. It really taught me a lot about how type comes together. Like what are the patterns in each type style, uh, the delicate details in certain strokes. Uh, and this, this is when I really started to love type because I was examining a very specific letter form every part of it. And to me, it reinforced this idea that type is physical. It's this thing that I can um, manipulate, not just on the screen, it has weight, it has form, and it has history. And, and that's what that dedicated time allowed me to do when I first started coming up to the museum. Now, I'm very lucky. I get to work with the world's largest collection of type. Uh, I have been at Hamilton for 12 years now. And uh, when individuals come through our doors, that's exactly what they're looking for. They're looking for a connection, a conversation, and a community. Uh, you could be like, hey, she said the title of the movie. That's uh, that moment. And we help facilitate all of this through storytelling and hands-on experiences. We are the only museum dedicated to the preservation, study, production, and printing of wood type. We have over a million and a half pieces. So that's the world's largest collection. And you can do so much with it. So you can take a tour. You can see the type actually being made on original type making equipment. Uh, you can see art being made. Uh, you can view contemporary letterpress in our galleries and sometimes historic uh, letterpress printing. You can buy a print. Uh, you can buy new wood type that we're actually making at the museum. Or you can even take part in a hands-on workshop. So I'm going to go more in depth on, on all of those pieces. And this was all started by James Edward Hamilton. He was born and raised in Two Rivers, and he actually made chairs and pails in a local factory. And in 1880, William Nash, uh, who was the editor of the Two Rivers Chronicle, 
needed a large decorative type for a dance. So the grand ball was going to happen and he he procrastinated. He was human. He waited too long to order his type. So uh, he could have, like if, if he wasn't human and, and waited too long, he could have gone from a large manufacturer on the East Coast. But it takes a long time or took a long time in 1880 to get wood type or anything from the East Coast to Two Rivers, which is right on the coast in Wisconsin. So he asked Hamilton, who uh, James Edward Hamilton, who was known for working with wood, if he could make the type. And Hamilton invented an entirely new way to make type, veneer. So instead of using a lateral router, which we'll see one soon, um, which is how everybody else was doing it. Those big manufacturers would have this lateral router come in and cut out what was unneeded from one piece of wood. What he did was he actually used a thin veneer of Hollywood, which he could get because of the um, furniture business or furniture industry. Um, and then he would cut it out on his foot powered scroll saw, which was on his mom's front porch. And it worked. All you need for relief printing, which is what letterpress printing is, is a raised surface that takes ink and then transfers it onto paper. So that's what he did. And he, he used that method, the veneer method for 10 years, Within that time, he bought out most of his competition, uh, including the biggies. So Page, uh, Morgans and Wilcox, Heber Wells. And during the 1890s, uh, within 20 years, um, that's all he bought those out or put them out of business. But within 20 years, he was the largest manufacturer of wood type. And what started with wood type only grew from there. He then made cabinets and cases, uh, dental cabinets. Uh, doctor cabinets, drafting tables, and they made wood type in the Hamilton factory until 1985, which is super late. Um, in fact, even then they moved it to a different local building and they called it HWT. And all they did in that building was make wood type and they made wood type into rivers uh, as a, an industry until 1993. Then in 1999, a group of individuals didn't want to lose the history. Uh, what happened was the Two Rivers Historical Society heard that the big machines that were used to make the type were going to be sold. And they said that's really important to Two Rivers and, and our story. And so we're going to start a museum. So that's that's what they did. Two Rivers Historical Society opened the doors in 1999, and it has definitely been growing ever since. So we even moved to a new location in 2013. Uh, sadly, they tore down the original factory. We were there when it happened. We were the last, uh, the last people in the building. So that was um, a very interesting and sad time, just because wouldn't, wouldn't we have loved to just camp in there forever? But we found a nice big building, which has allowed us to grow both our collections and what we do. Uh, we are now our own separate 501c3. So we would not have been started without the Two Rivers Historical Society. Uh, but this separation allows us to grow in new ways. In fact, we are celebrating our 25th anniversary next year. Uh, we have dubbed it internally 25 and 24 uh, because it's too close in numbers for us to, to keep doing. So our board and staff have done a lot of work over the past few years. Um, we've set a forward thinking path. So we always look to our history to determine where we're going. We've uh, done a new mission, much shorter than our previous mission. And I like it because it encapsulates a lot. And that's Hamilton Wood Type and Printing Museum preserves history for creative use today. And that's really important as we go through um, every activity that we do at Hamilton. And the work is very important. We have the world's largest collection of type with over a million and a half pieces. When we moved into our current location, we moved 27 semi uh, trailer trucks. Once we moved in, we also added five more uh, semi trailer trucks uh, just with the Inquirer collection alone. So keeping our eye on preservation while ensuring that it's available for current artists and the next generation um, is really important because it's not just for us, it's for the printers, designers, and researchers that are to come. And many of our collections relate to everyday life because it's, it's how we communicated, it's how we advertised. So even sometimes when we look at it, we might think, oh, that harkens back to a former time. There are definitely pieces about it that are very directly tied to what we do and that we can understand because each piece tells a story. Um, just like today, it's advertising that 
begs us to do something. So it, you know, tells you to go to a circus or to believe it or not. They have these bold colors, these interesting animals and these death defying stunts. The wood type on these um, are carved from pantographs or hand carved. They were used in newspaper headlines, posters and billboards. And as the museum has grown, so has what we contain inside our walls. So we have a few collections. The big ones that are well known because they have a lot of um, decorative blocks like you can see here are the Globe Collection and the Inquirer Collection. They're two of our largest collections and they were used to advertise events around the country. So specifically for Inquirer, we have the blocks and we have the posters. So these posters that you see up on the wall, we have all of the blocks to reprint those today. And that's the we, Cincinnati Inquirer, right? It is, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So, right, uh, close to home. Uh, and so, yeah, it was Cincinnati Inquirer and they're still around. So the Anderson family is a fifth generation owned uh, print shop. I got to visit it earlier this year. It was awesome. Uh, and now like at the museum, we have 500 of the circus fair and carnival posters. And we have 1500 of the hand carved plates and more than 5,000 pieces of, of wood type. So um, it's keeping us busy to say the least. And they were founded in 1895. Uh, and the amazing thing is they, when they kept it after they were done printing, they stacked it up and it was stored in a heated um, facility. So it was really protected for so many years. And uh, in 2015, that's when we, the museum acquired this collection. Um, and so we're still unpacking boxes. Uh, you can watch Ham Hangs, which was our online um, uh, events that we were doing, where Jim and I literally would go in the back and we would just open up crates. And it would have been really easy to peek in before we did it on screen. And we never did. We, did. we were just like, let's see what's in here. So that was really fun. It was a surprise to us as well as everyone watching. And uh, with both of these collections and the, the globe, it's good for us to also talk about the location as well for globe. That was the Chicago globe because there were a couple of different globe printers. Like people might know globe printing down in Baltimore. Micah has that collection and they're using it. And there is as much more music related. That's what they were advertising. Uh, whereas our globe collection from Chicago uh, is more, a lot of fairs. We have a lot of fair blocks. Um, and circus and political pieces. Um, so that's what our collection contains more of. Um, and we are in the act of uh, cataloging these. Um, a big thought in the letterpress community, which was started by Hatch Showprint. If you don't know Hatch Showprint, they're in Nashville, Tennessee, and they're the longest running um, commercial letterpress printers still around, now in the Country Music Hall of Fame. But they dubbed this idea of preservation through production. And that is something that we also prescribe to. Uh, it means that the type and the blocks are actually being helped by being used. Uh, it doesn't allow them to dry out as quickly as if they were just sitting on a shelf. Um, and the printing allows us to share these stories. So you can actually see them. They just sat on, um, we could take pictures of them, but by actually having the printed pieces, we can share that process, that printing process, or people can actually purchase them. In fact, in this image, uh, Dan Radigan is one of our board members at Hamilton, um, but he's also a type designer. So he's done a lot of research and exploring in our collections. And here's H.R. Beachler. They were hired earlier this year uh, to print very specifically with the collection at Hamilton. And what's really important to us is that we're straddling this, this line of history and contemporary. It is one of the ways we keep the museum relevant to today's audiences. It's exciting to see how letterpress printing and its history, um, along with the constraints of the craft, right? I know we have some letterpress printers in the audience, um, that those constraints really push uh, creatives to find new ways to use them. So the same type that was used to print newspaper headlines and letterheads and fair posters are now being used in uh, new and artistic ways. So as the largest manufacturer of wood type, it's really important for us to like know that this wood type is in countless shops. It's all over the country, it's even overseas. And it was made in two rivers, but in the 21st century, it allows individuals the power to be, 
to communicate. Um, and that direct ability of type that's over 100 years old, that it still has the capacity to perform its original function, it really has this authenticity that we find completely captivating. Like that keeps us going every day that we actively can use, share, um, and keep, keep this history alive. And to that point, we are a working museum. We cut type just like Hamilton did, uh, starting in 1890 with that pantograph. And we print posters and teach others how to print using the original equipment and type. So in general, we are seeing this return to letterpress printing and all things artisanal. We always see there's, um, there's a cycle uh, and it depends on what's what's out there, but we've all gotten a letterpress printed wedding invite or business card. Um, and it, it harkens back to this idea of this historic method, but we're seeing it with vinyl records. We're seeing it with film cameras. Uh, we love, yes, Terry, we love the return to letterpress printing. And as technology develops, it creates items or processes that might be more efficient in terms of speed and productivity. Meaning, yes, there are faster ways to print than letterpress printing, but these older technologies offer something more underappreciated, but very valuable. So craft work, like, like printing or knitting or woodworking, it allows us to focus on a repetitive action. Like I adore doing darkroom photography. It's very repetitive, same idea of printing. And it allows us to have an item to focus on. It allows us to think about um, different ways of problem solving, that connection to tradition. So that's what we really love is that we can help share these, um, these historic pieces, but that it has a much broader reach and it has a much broader outcome than just looking at pretty things, even though they're very pretty. So at Hamilton, we not only teach uh, letterpress workshops, but we also teach things like bookmaking, so related arts. Uh, and we are happy to be a working museum. So these pieces do not just sit under glass. Um, they are printed by staff and visitors alike. So we teach letterpress printing. Um, and this is an example of colleges and universities that come and they do tours and workshops. And depending on their length of time, we've really made it easy that if you only have an hour or two, you can still have a hands-on experience where maybe you're sitting, setting your type, type your, your name in wood type. And then you get to actually print something and still take that that home. Still wet in the bag, you know, we tell you how to take care of it. Um, so having graphic design students, typography students, um, and even uh, like architects and painting students is really great uh, for, uh, for outreach. And then we also work with great educators in our community to provide a wide variety of programs and classes. Uh, this one I really loved because paper and print geeks included. Uh, and this one was fun because actually we'd never printed on seed packets before. So Katie Reese is the lovely lady on the left there. And each student brought in seeds to share with the class. And so then they letterpress printed the packets and then each student left with eight new varieties of seeds and eight letterpress printed packets, which was pretty cool. So it's that fun idea that we have wonderful educators in our area and we can work with them to think of new ways to engage our collection. Uh, or even think of different ways of printing. So we've been working with Rebecca Jabs. She's a local um, illustrator and educator and she's been providing uh, or teaching our teen nights so this idea that everybody loves printing whether it's printing with a potato carving linoleum and uh, she's done some really great things where we've printed some tree rings or some fish or uh, I think next week we're going to be printing plants and so that we can um, engage all ages is important. And then also when people come to take our workshops, they have something they wanna share, right? There's a reason why they're taking it, either like the smell of the ink reminds and the mineral spirits reminds them of their dad's shop back in the day, uh, or they wanna print a really personal poster that they wanna put up on their wall because that's gonna remind them of their personal mantra every day. Um, and so that has really pushed us to think of new ways to share our story. So. Uh, we cut wood type just like Hamilton did, uh, but then we started to think about what happens if you want to learn to cut type like Hamilton did. So we've engaged different individuals. In fact, we had a couple of Italians come last summer and they learned the process of wood type cutting. 
And uh, so here on the right, you can see Jen Ann. She's one of our wood type cutters. And on the left is a workshop participant. So we've also, um, George Leash and Jen Ann have started to uh, teach teach wood type cutting workshops, which means you can use the, the OG patterns, the original patterns and the um, original pantographs. And so it's a really amazing process. So Jen is, uh, she's been working at Hamilton for about four, four years now. Um, and she really got in, interested in cutting wood type and learning that process. And she's been learning from one of the best. So George Leash is there in standing up in the Hamilton shirt. Uh, George is a second generation type cutter. So her dad, Norb Brilski, worked at the Hamilton factory. He made patterns. He worked in the type shop. And she learned from him. Um, she also learned from Mardell Dubeck, who was original type cutter. And she's been at Hamilton uh, since before we moved. She was learning when we were still in the original factory. And so it's really exciting that she is open to and actively engaging with these new ideas of, of getting other people hands-on with the equipment. So that's George. George and Jen are our wood type ladies. Uh, and we don't just host workshops. Um, workshops are, are huge. They're good. Like they're fun. They're so fun because people of all levels come into print with us. So people who have never ever printed before and just want to experience it. It's called a, we do drink and inks where uh, ink and drinks where people can just kind of explore the idea of letterpress printing in a couple hours. Uh, or we have people who um, are very experienced and they can't get um, the things we have in their own personal collection or the other places they print. So that's important. Um, but then we also make sure that people get the idea that they can come into Hamilton anytime. Because if you live in Two Rivers, Wisconsin, you might know that Hamilton made dryers. That was the only appliance they ever made. Uh, or that they made dental cabinets and doctor cabinets. But maybe you actually don't know about the wood type portion that Hamilton made. Um, Hamilton was one of the largest manufacturers in the area. So everybody had somebody who worked at Hamilton, like your cousin, your brother, your mom's uncle, somebody in your family worked at Hamilton at some point because um, because uh, Two Rivers is um, 11 to 13,000 people. So it's not not huge. Um, so it's important that we recognize that everyone is welcome at Hamilton. So uh, making sure our doors are open at least once a year for open houses or gallery openings is really important. So uh, this was from earlier this year where we did some printing demos and we did some wood type cutting demos and everybody got to get just a little bit inky before they left our, our doors. And okay, what if what if you see that big old factory? We're still in an old factory, just not Hamilton's old factory. And um, you, you haven't made it in yet, right? We're right on a highway. We look out over Lake Michigan. It's awesome, but you just haven't made the time. So what we've started to do is definitely take our show on the road more. And we've done this for a long time. We've taught and demoed at colleges or conferences around the country. Uh, this summer, we've started doing demos at our local farmer's market. And it's a really nice way to meet our local community. Uh, here's our setup at this year's um, event our lovely interns who uh, helped do this event. Uh, we have a small seven by 11 press and one person can actually pick that up. So it's really nice for taking on the road. We pack three to four cases of wood type and some composing sticks, which is where you put the wood type. We print one layer. So you can see in the image, uh, the silver layer uh, that says I love is what we took with us, a big stack of them. And then people could put whatever they love um, and then they could take that home as a little memento, um, both to say like, hey, I engaged with vintage wood type and it's also something I hold dear. So that's really fun. We also would print extras. Yay for um, letterpress printing being uh, you can produce multiples. Um, and we kept some of the fun answers because it's really fun to see like what our community um, loves and, and cares about. So from a very, very small print to very, very big prints, um, in fact, uh, really big prints is this event that we held at Hamilton this year. And this event has actually happened, uh, let's see, almost 10 times. Uh, oh no, 10 years, uh, so maybe five times. But it was always over in Manitowoc, which is right next door, maybe five or 10 minutes away from Two Rivers. And they did it at the University of Wisconsin campus in Manitowoc. Um, but Beryl, the instructor there, 
you know, decided to retire. Sometimes it's it's time for a change. But he still wanted to do really big prints. So he said, can we do this at Hamilton? And we had participated uh, previously. So we said, yeah, of course. So Katie Reese is the other person running that event. And we brought it to Hamilton and it was awesome. 40 teams brought these large scale blocks to Hamilton. So they're already pre-carved. They bring them to the museum and we print them using a steamroller. We'd never done a steamroller event. So that's pretty exciting. It's definitely a spectacle, so it's great for the um, the printmakers because they get to engage with Hamilton in new ways, but also uh, the community loves it. Like, who does not want to see a steamroller run over something and then have a piece of art come from that? Uh, it's three and a half days of nonstop printing, which is, oh, our Waze Goose is two and a half days, so it really, you know, tested uh, tested all the staff. Um, and we made friends with so many more people, including Mike, the steamroller guy uh, who joined us from the city. So um, so that was really amazing. We'd never done anything quite like this. I would say we print at this scale on some of the presses we have, um, but we had never had this kind of engagement with printmakers on that scale. And the work will be on display. Right now it's at Rar West Art Museum. So if you are in the Two Rivers area on Sunday, actually, um, uh, at our local art museum, the Rar West Art Museum, we have uh, an exhibition reception closing, um, I think from one to three. So hey, if you're in Two Rivers, come come see it. Uh, otherwise, you can see it at uh, the Hamilton Ways Goose. So that's our conference we have every year. And after it's done at our local art museum, it comes over to Hamilton and we will be putting it up in October. So to that point, let's talk about Ways Goose. Ways Goose is our big conference that we have. Um, like Terry says, come to Ways Goose. This is like your personal invitation. Join us, it's a lot of fun. Let's see, this is our 15th year, so it's definitely going to be a celebration. And uh, a Waze Goose is historically a gathering of letterpress printers. Um, what they would do is they would get ready to work by candlelight. It was in the fall. The um, wife of the printer would cook a goose, which we, we don't do that anymore. But um, what they were doing is they were preparing the shop for winter. So working in the cold, uh, dark, long nights um, of winter time. And so it was a celebration, it was a party. We do continue that idea of it being a celebration or a party. Uh, let's see, this year it is November 3rd through 5th. And uh, it's fun. So what we do is we've always had these hands-on workshops. So that's the day before, that's on Friday. Uh, this is uh, an image from Daffy Kuna. He's a printer in Switzerland um, that we had a couple years ago. And, and they're fun. We try to keep letterpress printing or something closely related, like um, Barb Tettenbaum is going to do pressure printing. Uh, it's colorized printer pressure printing on like vintage uh, blocks, halftone blocks, which is pretty cool. Um, Lynn uh, Avadenka and Shani Avni are doing something with Hebrew and Yiddish wood type. They're doing poster printing with that. There's been a lot of interest in that lately, so we're happy to provide that. And then Sarah Matthews is doing um, altered books. So that idea of we have three or four press rooms at Hamilton, but it's really nice to be able to pro uh, provide other options as well. So we definitely focus on uh, letterpress printing, typography, paper, graphic design, uh, happens once a year, second or week of November. Uh, yeah, we've got part, we've got friends, friends. Um, it definitely, we kind of dub it as a, oh, a family reunion because it's so nice to see everybody again. Uh, on Saturday night, we end with going bowling at a local bowling alley. And we've been very lucky in tiny two rivers. We'd have some amazing speakers. So let's see, Stephen Heller, Louise Feely, Jonathan Heffler noted here, uh, Jessica Hish, Gail Anderson. Um, we, Gail, um, and we've maxed out at about 25 people, uh, 250 people. So we do try to keep it small uh, for that reason, that it's really nice to be able to get to see people again and again. Uh, and each year it's about half, half have joined us before and half are brand new. Uh, and to, to that point, we wanted to try something new. We thought, what if you've never come to Ways Goose before and you don't know anybody? What if you want to start to know people? So we've dubbed it the Welcome Wagon. And on Friday, you can experience the museum. If Say you're not taking a workshop, but you just want to start to see what this is all about. Um, we have Goose Ambassadors that are going to help show you the way if you've never been before, or if you've been before and you just want to meet new people. 
Uh, and then you get to, let's see, we have Provisional Press is going to be there and they're going to be showing how to print with Legos. Um, Jenna from Richcraft is going to be doing, you have to uh, pay for hers because, you know, you, ladies got to eat. Um, but uh, you can do chain, she'll chain stitch on stuff for you. So bring your jean jackets. Um, and so it's that idea of like, oh, we're going to pull some stuff out. Oh, you can clean wood type because who doesn't want to clean wood type? But we thought that that idea from the beginning of the talk that like getting engaged with the type and holding the type is really important. So it's, I promise not just to get more of our type cleaned. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, there's some kind of fun things. Uh, I did kind of pop in here so many speakers. So anyway, you can get registered on woodtype.org. Um, and I will say Jim Moran, who was the director, I've worked with him for 12 years. He's retiring at the end of the year, if you haven't heard. So the very last thing we're going to do on Sunday is Tracy Hahn, our board president, is going to interview him. And uh, internally, we keep calling it Jim Apalooza. So join us so you can um, kind of celebrate Jim um, and say, I'm sure he'll always stick around because that's that's lovely. And we'll keep printing with Jim. But he officially uh, retires at the end of the year. And I will say amazing, unexpected things happen at Ways Goose in 2020. Uh, Hamilton received a Wisconsin Humanities uh, Council grant, and we called it the Visiting Artist Program for Cultural Community Engagement. Um, and this is the panel. We'll come back to this in a second. I want to tell you a little bit about the grant. The grant invited four artists um, to produce work that reflected on their voice in the modern context of imagery. Because we have images in the collection that are definitely not PC, and it was how it was how uh, we advertised back in the day. So we said instead of hiding these pieces, what happens if we invite artists to make work with these pieces? Um, so the project um, included an exhibition, presentations, the panel discussion, and it really helped provide some cultural offerings and and dialogue that's uncommon in our area. So back to the panel. Uh, so Rick Griffith, I'll go through what each of them did. Rick Griffith did ableism, and I'm starting on the left. He's the one holding the microphone. Next to him is Ben Blunt. Uh, he uh, did artwork about racism. Jim Moran is in the middle, and he's the staff member who ran the project. Kelly Walters uh, is the woman there, and um, she did sexism. And then next to them is H.R. Bichler, the person who now is on our staff. Um, and they explored animal exploitation with their piece. And uh, during the talk, which was amazing, or at the very end, we had questions and Melissa Blunt, wife of Ben Blunt, got up at the end and said, what is the museum doing to get more black women on the wall? We didn't have an answer for that. This was this idea of how can we actually make sure we look at the entire history of printing and who engaged with this art form. And there are black letterpress printers uh, now who, you know, maybe we haven't engaged with, we haven't explored with, we haven't talked to. So we didn't have that answer, but what I did is I had uh, dinner with uh, Melissa, who's on the left there, and Jennifer Graves, who's in the middle. And we thought, what is possible? How do we ensure that everyone feels welcome at Hamilton and is able to uh, experience it? So this year we created the BIWOC Summit, and this happened um, in August. And on the right-hand side is Desiree Asperis. So the three of them came and created art for one week. So much energy. Like we haven't had this much energy in Hamilton in a while and it was wonderful. And having three artists working together really changes what's happening at the time. Um, and the really interesting thing is, uh, I think Melissa and Jen had only met once before and they hadn't really met or worked with Desiree. And so to see like how much was happening in one week crazy. Uh, you can see information on our Instagram, which is at Hamilton Woodtype, because that link directly to those artists. So you can see it on our feed. Um, and we have a blog post about it at woodtype.org. Um, but also go and, and engage with those artists and see what they're creating. Um, because like Jen Graves took the work back. She's a letterpress printer and she's going to be uh, working with those pieces and finishing those in, in her own uh, print spaces. So what this does is it allows us to continue our conversations, uh, specifically with this group of people. It allows us to dream big uh, to ensure that individuals have access to the press. We know there's so much power in having a voice, and the press historically has been an important place for that to happen. 
So I love that the Waze Goose was this wonderful catalyst as we actively look at how we engage with our community. Uh, and one of the ways that we engage with our community is our new impressions exhibition. This was our eighth year to do this juried exhibition. Uh, it allows us to showcase and see really exciting contemporary letterpress printing works. So we do a call. This year it um, attracted 237 submissions from over 100 artists and we had 41 pieces of art that went up on the wall. So we're seeing work from Brazil, Italy, uh, Slovakia, Spain, the United Kingdom, and the US. Um, we've seen it from other countries in other years, so it's really great to kind of see different artists participate. And each year we do a um, virtual catalog, since we know that not everyone can come, and the idea is that we share how we are actively exploring letterpress printing. So we have a virtual catalog, a virtual exhibition, because not everyone can come to Two Rivers. Uh, we also have a printed catalog and a printed event poster. We're a print museum. We, we have to have the printed pieces. Uh, for the past six years, we've worked with Nick Larson. He's a printer and designer at Hat Show Print uh, to design our, our event posters and, and catalogs. Uh, it's great. On those posters, Nick and I collaborate. I will say that Nick drives the design choices. They're awesome. I'm normally like, yes, let's do that. It's wonderful. And I really love it because he tries to use another font from our Type Legacy program. Uh, and this is like one more way that we engage this idea of contemporary letterpress. So throughout those, you can see um, pieces that are letterpress printed, but engaging with and using uh, contemporary designs. And that's what the, the Wood Type Legacy Project is. So it's a collaboration between the museum and we worked with really amazing type designers um, to create brand new wood type in the 21st century uh, on our pantographs um, so that this continues this idea of type design um, in a historical context, but in new methods. So um, it really has this wonderful way of blending 19th century technologies and 21st century design which I adore. So here you see um, the Conop uh, type style. So it was designed by Mark Simonson. And Conop is really important. The name of every type style is also very important. Um, Don Conop worked at Hamilton and was the board president of the Historical Society for a long time, which started the museum. And um, so each type style is named after someone who's important to this legacy at Hamilton. So Mark Simonson designed this type style um, and thought about the letterpress printing process. It's lovely. Each letter form is square, so it makes a beautiful grid. Um, it's a monospaced um, fixed width typeface. So really fun to use on press, different than any other uh, wood type I've ever used before. And here with George at the pantograph. And this project really, really exemplifies this idea of Hamilton's commitment to the principle of preservation through use. It's um, really makes sure that we keep our wood type process um, alive because we really have to be exacting in our methods and also shows our capacity to engage with contemporary design, the contemporary design community. So this piece is Edda, um, James Edward, the person who started Hamilton, his wife, she was a bookkeeper for Hamilton um, and it's designed by Lin Yun and the designs are digitized. So on every type legacy, uh, we also take those letter forms and we have the designer make sure they're digitized and available. So if you use Adobe products, you could actually use, please do, please go use the Hamilton designs um, digitally as well as on, on the the press. So it's amazing. Schools are often buying these um, fonts. So schools that have letterpress programs will have their students design digitally and then go to the press and work back and forth. Uh, so it's really amazing to see what's happening uh, with these fonts once they kind of go out into the world. Nike used this, um, used Etta East on some of their apparel. So I ordered a couple t-shirts last week because it was really cool to see. Um, we've had a mate, we've worked with really amazing designers on this. So Marion Banshees, Matthew Carter, Louise Feely, um, Nick Sherman, Eric Speakerman, which that's, this one is arts. He designed it because he looked at the process and liked the idea that there would be no hand trimming because each letter form that comes off the pantograph has to be hand trimmed, but he liked the idea of taking that out of the process. So it's a very like rounded type style. 
um, Lynn Yoon, who we showed, and Craig Welsh. So really, um, really amazing to work with these great designers. And this is my invitation. You can be a part of the museum. We are a 501c3, and there are so many ways you can get involved. If you're near, nearby, come volunteer. Uh, if you're a student, you can intern. Uh, you can take a tour. Say you're just stopping by. Maybe you're, you know, you're in Chicago and that's only three hours away. So that's close enough for you to stop. Uh, and you can support us by becoming a member. I printed these member certificates earlier in the year and I've been told by Jen they are running out. So guess what I get to do next week? I get to print some more uh, membership certificates. So, uh, so it's really fun to be able to do that. Another fun thing I have to admit is we have entirely too much joy planning and purchasing new things for the store. <laughs> um, Emily um, used to be a volunteer at Hamilton for years. She's been there seven or eight years, uh, but she's been hired within the last year to really do some kind of fun things with our store. So she runs it and she thinks of kind of fun new ways. So they're printing stuff in the press room that we then sell, um, aprons for any of those printers out there, fancy stickers. Um, so, and of course, letterpress prints. We're a working museum. We, we wouldn't be doing our job if we weren't, you know, helping share those prints. Um, and that's it. To wrap up, we straddle this line of history and contemporary work. It's really relevant to today and how we engage with people. Um, we really find it important to work with our community and these new partners. And so we look forward to what continuing this legacy uh, means for both us and those in our, our, in our community. So um, while we are almost all Luddites, we love to share what we're doing on our website and our social media. Um, I run our Instagram. So if you, if you comment uh, or if you message, hey, that's me. Um, so please kind of check those out. Um, on our YouTube, we have all the ham hangs, which are like the Millcraft meetups um, that when we were doing, um, when we were engaging online. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Stephanie.